Welcome to Bali. Directly behind me is the gusty Nugaradai International Airport, specifically the International Terminal. I, when I first arrived here two years ago, I spotted a very interesting airline that I wasn't expecting on being here. And I pledged to my parents that one day I would fly on said airline. And today is that day when we fly on the Dutch carrier KLM on a 777-300ER in premium economy bound for Singapore. Having only just entered the country, filmed my introduction, and spent a few minutes to rest before starting to film properly again, I made my way down to the terminal for today's flight. One thing I failed to realize about entering Indonesia and Bali is that no matter what, you must pay for a visa upon arrival, which I was misinformed by the Air New Zealand ground staff back in Auckland. I was told that I wouldn't have to pay for the visa on arrival, as I am a transiting passenger, but that only applies to the flights on the same ticket, and I wasn't too happy about this, but alas I had no choice and I was forced to pay. Bali is a very popular tourist destination in East Indonesia, particularly popular with Australians. Last time I was here I was a genuine visitor and not a transit passenger, and I can say it's quite the unique place with a great deal of things to do. As stated in my introduction, today I shall be flying with the Dutch carrier KLM on board a 777 bound for Singapore. Upon arriving at the terminal building, I swiftly made my way inside to check in. Indonesian airports have x-ray machines at all entrances to their terminal buildings, with airport guards stationed checking all tickets ensuring only passengers are allowed to pass through. Check-in for KLM is located at the Bravo check-in area, with two separate areas for economy, business and bag drop only for online check-in passengers. As I was in premium economy, I was invited to use the priority lane, which at the time I didn't really realize, instead going for the standard economy lane, which took 50 minutes. Jesus Christ. Having completed the check-in process with the very friendly ground staff here at Bali, I proceeded immediately to security and immigration. Once I had cleared security, I quickly proceeded through the usual duty-free shopping, which I decided to skip today, instead focusing on the lounge ahead. Priority Pass members have access to a single lounge here at Bali Airport, that being the Concordia Lounge, which is located next to the Garuda Indonesia Business Class Lounge. Inside the lounge is a fairly decent selection of seating spread across the entire length of the room, featuring lounges, workstations, couples chairs, and a more formal dining area. However, there are no window views at all. One thing I found out about this lounge is that at all times, whilst I was in there for approximately an hour, is that the lounge was constantly busy, with people moving in and out at all times. The menu this evening isn't very large, but it has a wide range of options, including fresh orange juice, pastries, muffins, donuts, cakes, scrambled egg and bacon sandwiches, a selection of soft drinks and water, a simple DIY salad kit, steamed veggies, chicken pieces, rice, noodles, one of the most bizarre looking soups which I couldn't really remember what it was condiments and chips. I decided to get a few pieces of chicken and steamed veggies with rice, orange juice and a Sprite. The chicken was very dry and grainy, 
And the moment the sauce was gone, oh, which, by the way, was great, I couldn't really stomach the chicken. Later, I opted for a few proper pieces of chicken, which were actually edible, and a strawberry glazed donut. After watching a friend's stream, I noticed that my departure time was approaching quickly, and I made my way to the gate in preparation for boarding. Bali Airport, specifically the International Terminal, is laid out on a long corridor with gates spread across its entirety. It does take quite a bit of time to walk between the gates, but it's nothing in comparison to, say, Osaka Kansai Airport. Upon arriving at the gate, I was able to catch a glimpse of the aircraft that'll be flying me to Singapore, which today is a Boeing 777-300ER, registered as Papa Hotel Bravo Victor India. She was built at the Seattle Boeing Field Airport in Washington, being delivered brand new to KLM in June of 2012, making this aircraft just short of 12 years old. Boarding today commenced on time from gate 2 and each section was called by group number. KLM's 777-300ERs are in a three-class configuration, with 35 business class seats in a 1-2-1 layout, 24 premium economy class seats in a 2-4-2 layout, and 322 standard economy class seats in a 3-3-3 layout. Walking down the aisle, I got a glimpse of the business class seat, which made me very jealous. However, this evening I shall be seated in 11 kilo, the first row of premium economy on the right hand side. The premium economy class, or economy comfort as KLM calls it, has 34 inches of pitch and 17 and a half inches of width. On the side of the seat, there is a small storage area for passports and phones, there are also noise-cancelling headphones provided. Besides this is an earphone port and an attachment for the noise-cancelling headphones. Next to that is the controls for the seat and two USB ports. You'll also find the reading light and flight attendant call button. On the other side is a standard tray table that folds out from the armrest in half and extends. In the seat pocket you'll find a waste bag, safety card, magazine and two air sickness bags. Above are individual reading lights only. In the middle of each duo of seats are secondary reading lights. Awaiting at every seat is a soft pillow, but upon a closer inspection, it was absolutely filthy. We commenced our pushback from gate 2 11 minutes ahead of schedule.
taxi to runway 9 via November and November 7. Now please enjoy this unedited takeoff. After takeoff, we spun around to the left over the island, setting a northwesterly course for Singapore. Flight time tonight is 2 hours and 15 minutes, covering a distance of 1,106 miles or 1,779 kilometers, cruising at 38,000 feet. During boarding, the crew handed out to all premium class passengers menus for the flight to Singapore and onwards to Amsterdam, which we shall get to soon enough. On the back of every premium class seat, or in my case in the armrest, is a near 10 inch entertainment screen featuring a wide selection of the latest movies, TV shows, music and games. There is also a fairly decent moving map, powered by Flight Path 3D, and it's one of the better ones out there. It's not as good as say Turkish Airlines, but still it's much better than Qantas in my opinion. On board the aircraft is Wi-Fi with free messaging available to all classes, but for internet access, regardless of class, you have to pay, which today I opted to skip. During our initial climb, we flew directly over Keresan Bengali, which is at the base of Mount Bata, which today will be the only piece of visible land. Not long after this, dinner was served, which today was chicken satay with nasi goreng, egg and mixed veggies. For side dishes, we were served Thai papaya salad with glass noodles and sweet chili, and for dessert a yuzu and peach cake, which was really quite tasty. I also asked for a glass of white wine, which today was Chenin Blanc from South Africa. On board the aircraft are nine bathrooms, two for business and seven for premium and economy classes. Inside is everything you'd typically expect to find for an economy bathroom, but it was in a poor state due to the previous passenger.
After this, I decided to sleep for the remainder of the cruise, as my body was telling me that I had been awake for at least 23 hours at this point. Eventually, the lights were turned back on and we commenced our descent into Singapore. With the time approaching 11pm, there wasn't much to be seen, except for the poorly lit engine nacelle and leading edge of the wing. Eventually, we reached the busy airspace surrounding Singapore, therefore we made a series of left and right hand turns to align for landing, which was paired with the views of the city below. Now please enjoy this unedited landing. After landing, we taxied back to the terminal via Whiskey 7, Whiskey, Victor 8 and Victor 13 to Charlie 21. We pulled into the gate, five minutes behind our scheduled arrival time. Stepping off the aircraft and into Singapore Changi's Terminal 1, I was parted with the thanks from the crew in the Dutch language. Flying on board KLM. What an interesting experience to say the least. Let's start at the beginning. I initially had trouble booking this flight six weeks beforehand on the KLM website, which worried me as I tried multiple times and each time it failed. Not wanting to give up, I bought this flight for slightly more than expected on a third party website when I was starting to become desperate to secure a seat on board. Premium comfort passengers are entitled to Sky Priority Check-In which I was not informed by KLM during the booking process and having to wait over 50 minutes in a line for economy with only two check-in staff is unacceptable. The lounge in Bali was pretty alright. It was nothing to jump for joy about but you know, it was pretty good. Though it was very hot in that room but that's unsurprising given the location of Bali. The seat was also fairly good and the food on board was great. My particular favourite was the salad, despite its look, was actually really fresh and tasty. Whether the catering was conducted at Bali or in Singapore, it doesn't really matter. The food is a very strong point on KLM. What let them down today was being told off for filming the moment I walked through the door, and the absolutely disgusting pillow with another passenger's stain on it. And I'm sure you would agree, I find it to be completely unacceptable, especially for premium economy. My final thoughts upon leaving the airport were of only a single question. Would I fly KLM again? To this I say, maybe. It really depends on if the points I've covered will be improved upon or not. If so, then yes, I would definitely do it, just not this route. Next time to Amsterdam. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment and subscribe. Make sure to check out the other videos I have on my YouTube channel. And now I have a Discord server, feel free to join, link at the top of the description. And don't forget to ring that notification bell if you enjoy my content, and if you want to see more, I post my videos every Friday at 8pm Sydney time. And I hope to see you again in the next one. See you later!